that a yard sale I see? Fifth grade, come with me, let's see what they got for sale. Books, my favorite. Oh, this is a good one. Oh my gosh, one of my favorites. Yard Sale by Eve Bunting. Fifth grade, let's go read it. Yard Sale by Eve Bunting. Illustrated by Lauren Castillo. The publisher is Candlewick Press. Almost everything we own is spread out in our front yard. It is all for sale. We are moving to a small apartment. Small but nice, my mom told me. She and dad took me to see it. He showed me the fun bed that came down from the wall. Look, he said, it's right in the living room. It's all nice, I said, but it didn't feel like ours. Today, there are a lot of people walking around our front yard, picking up things, asking the price, though mom and dad already put prices on them. How much for this? A woman asks, touching the headboard off my bed. Ten dollars, my mom says. The woman sniffs. But look, someone has put crayon marks all on it. I'll give you five. My mom sighs. <sighs> All right. I wish I hadn't put the crayon marks on there. They were to show how many times I had read Goodnight Moon. My best friend Sarah and her little brother Petey come over from their house next door. They are both still in their PJs. You got a lot of people, Sarah says. That's good. I nod. I suddenly see a man loading my bike into the back of his truck. I rush over to him and grab one of the wheels. I'm really angry. You can't take this, I say, pulling on it. It's mine. Oh, the man looks surprised, but he sets the bike on the grass. I'm sorry, I just bought it. Was it not meant to be for sale? So are you noticing already how the little girl is feeling about her yard sale? My dad runs over to us. Oh, Callie, he puts his hand over mine. We told you, sweetie, we have no place to keep it. And there's no sidewalk outside, just a street with lots of traffic. I look up at him and I think his eyes are all teary, but probably not. My dad doesn't cry. It's okay, I say, and I let go of the bike. I don't need to take it, the man begins. It's okay, I say again. Then I add, but will you give it back to me when we get our house back? The man smiles. Definitely. I walk back to Sarah. I wish you didn't have to go, she mutters. Why do you anyway? I shrug. I don't know. It's something to do with money. Sarah picks up Petey's pacifier, which he has dropped, and sticks it back into his mouth before he can scream. I don't get it, she says. I don't exactly either. Sarah stares at me. I could ask my parents if you could stay with us. I give her a hug. She smells of Fruit Loops. My parents would be lonely, I say. Maybe we could give them Petey instead, she offers. No offense, I say, but I'd miss my mom and dad. So the little girl seems pretty, you know, sad, angry, confused about why she's having to have this yard sale in the first place. I wonder how that will change throughout the story. Is this for sale? A man asks me. He's pointing at a red geranium and a big blue pot. For a minute, I feel important. I think so, I say, but you better talk to my dad. Over there, I point. Dad smiles at the man. 
It's for sale if you can move it. It's pretty heavy. The man rolls it on wheels he's brought and heaves it into his truck. Almost everything is gone. Anything that's left, my dad is selling cheap. He and my mom look droopy. My dad is rubbing my mom's back. There they are right there. They seem pretty sad too, guys. Sarah and Petey have gone back to their own house. I hate people buying our stuff. It's not fair. I think I'll give Sarah my red heart necklace before we leave. And I'll tell her she can come visit. My mom says. A woman comes up to me. Aren't you just the cutest thing, she says, smiling. Are you for sale? A shiver runs through me, from my toes to my head. I run to my dad. I'm really bawling. I'm not for sale, am I? You wouldn't sell me, would you? My dad drops the garden chair he's holding. Not for a million trillion dollars, he says. Not ever, ever, ever. He wipes my nose. Suddenly, my mom's there, and we're all hugging at once. This seems like a pretty important moment in the story. Um, you know, the little girl's upset. She thinks that she's going to be sold, which, of course, isn't going to happen. But I think it's finally all hitting her what's happening. Dad stands up and calls out, Help yourselves to anything that's left for free. We don't need any of it. The people who are left scurry around. So after they came together as a family, Dad says everything is for free. Why do you think so? We go inside our almost empty house. And it's okay because we don't really need anything we've sold. And those things wouldn't fit in our new place anyway. So a pretty big change in our character's behavior and attitude towards the situation. What do you think she means by, we don't really need anything we've sold? Do they really need things to feel like they're home? But we will fit in our new place. And we are taking us. I think I'll like my new fun bed, I say. Mom smiles. I think you will. So, how does a little girl feel at the end of the story? How does a family feel at the end of the story? What is actually important to them? Their things or each other? <sighs> what a good story. All right, fifth grade, it's time to go home. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. You have to pay for that book. Oh, no, no. It was just part of a skit. It's, it's actually mine. This is a yard sale, ma'am. We need that. No, it's, it's mine. I promise. Ma'am. Come back.